Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we can have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UK we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days where we will once again see very minimal precipitation through the next five days it will be fairly warm especially in the west further eastwards we are tackling the risk of uh, some low cloud and we've seen a bit of that today which really has hampered temperatures so at the moment you're either in 20 plus degrees in warm sunshine you're under cloud temperatures in the mid to low teens we're seeing hugely vast uh, or vastly different uh, conditions for very short distances as we'll see in a minute on the live radar um, and that sort of contrast is likely to happen over the next five days so you could see a few days here or there where isn't too great in the east but a lot of the time it's going to be fairly warm uh, and it's looking very likely to be very dry best conditions as i said yesterday are across republic of ireland southwest england wales wales northern ireland and parts of western scotland as we have a longer range though as we'll see in the gfs gm east and wf and the ensembles we will continue to see this high pressure sit over the top of us and nearby but as we're towards sort of day seven to maybe day 10 we are increasingly seeing the risk of low pressure which has been sat well to our south towards the azores towards the mediterranean to perhaps one of those low pressure systems to drift our way bring the risk of some even hotter air as it does drag up southerly winds with the winds going around a low pressure system anti-clockwise if it's out to our southwest it will bring up a southerly flow so some very warm air or even hot air could be moved in temperatures maybe mid-20s or even 30 degrees in some extreme runs but also brings the risk of instability heavy rain and thunderstorms potentially so we could be seeing that sort of breakdown some warmer conditions but also some more thundery conditions around that sort of 10th of june point perhaps but we'll have a look at that in more detail today so you do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description do start on the live radar you can see it is bone dry once again so a few areas of light rain through parts of the East Midlands and North East England to East Anglia earlier today, but it's now pretty much bone dry. And this is just forming in that thicker low cloud. Now, I've put on the temperatures as of around 4 pm, you can see where that cloud is. You can pretty much pick it out completely. High ground and to the east in northern England. You see the high ground here with the slightly cooler air. To the east of that, it's into Yorkshire, North East England. Some blues appearing down into East Anglia and the East Midlands, perhaps drifting to parts of the West Midlands. That is where we've got low cloud. You can see it's not really due to your positioning in the country. It's just due to that cloud because in London, where we are still fairly close to the North Sea, still slightly cooler than areas further westwards because of that sea breeze, but it's south of the thicker cloud, and you can see as temperatures are climbing into the high teens or low 20s, and that continues into southwest England, a lot of Wales, northwest England, a lot of western Scotland, south western Scotland, and Republic of Ireland, and Northern Ireland, with the best conditions really here, into perhaps parts of County Mayo, they're very, very warm, uh, warmest area in the British Isles, likely, at the moment, uh, almost as hot as parts of northern and central europe um so just showing you even though we're all in the same air mass there is a brief uh, and very slight easterly flow it's that trapped cloud that thick cloud coming in off the north sea is really deciding the temperatures today and it's all down these northern and eastern coasts and you see a big swathe of it is through parts of the midlands at the moment now the position of this cloud will change over the coming days and hopefully it won't be as extensive as it has been today as we do head into early june but there is always the risk and that's why for eastern areas it is going to be dry hopefully it will be fairly warm but we will have, always have the risk that the cloud could be very stubborn like it's been today with it not clearing now, if you look at the UKV uh, and look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, we'll mainly be looking at the clouds really on the on the precipitation charts here as there is very little rain. And you can see a bit of drifting drizzle within that rain earlier today. Um, and you see by this afternoon, you can see that big area of cloud through the Midlands and East England. Again, we'd normally not be taking too much notice to this, but this is the real uh, temperature um, driver at the moment is the sunshine compared to the cloud. Now, it should break up through this evening, so those areas could see a little bit of sunshine around uh, sort of 6, 7 p.m. But as the sun starts to set around 8, 9 p.m., 
and all that cloud drifts back in overnight with quite a cloudy night in many areas. But as soon as the sun starts to rise, around that 5, 6 a.m., the cloud starts to retreat. And by 3 p.m., it's looking like that cloud is retreating right towards the coast with a few on and off areas of cloud further westward. So a much brighter day for all areas tomorrow. Again, it could be slightly different in reality, but from what we're seeing at the moment, slightly sunnier for many areas. Again, that cloud drifts in back in overnight and into Friday, another very nice day. Perhaps a subtle shift in wind direction there. See the cloud all staying into the North Sea. So Friday looks like a bone dry day with wall to wall sunshine for many regions. Into Saturday, another repeat of that. Again, it looks like the, uh, the wind direction has slightly altered. Again, if we do put on the mean sea level pressure, you can see the wind direction, um, well, wind direction has slightly changed because it's basically gone to zero here. Still a bit of an easily flow in the far southeast, but those ice bars are a little bit all over the place, a bit like snakes, implying that the wind gusts are very slow compared to at the moment, where it's much more of a stronger easterly. You can see that here, much tighter ice bars. These very subtle differences deciding how much that cloud moves in and how much it affects our temperatures. Uh, and if we go later this week, you can see again to the weekend, still fairly decent conditions. Sunday, perhaps a bit more cloud and maybe a few ice later showers, but again, still relatively dry. You see the upper air temperatures are actually very warm at the moment. They'll continue to warm up over the coming days. So if you see sunshine, low 20s is highly likely. And if we skip it all to the end of the run, still in a fairly warm air mass. So whenever we see sunshine um, combined with that, uh, with the, the, the very dry conditions we have at the moment, most areas will be into that 20 plus degree area. If you look at the max temperatures, you can see how regional it is today with those temperatures. Parts of the Midlands, 14, 15 degrees. Surrounding it in the sunshine, for part of Ireland, Scotland, southern England, northern Ireland, parts of Wales, widely 20 degrees. And above, getting towards 20 degrees, 23 degrees, sorry, across parts of Western Republic of Ireland, where we saw that on the live radar. Into tomorrow afternoon, those temperatures will rise once again. Perhaps more widely, still the far east coast, a little bit uh, holding those temperatures down, but more into the Midlands in 18, 19 or 20 degrees. And again, those usual areas, uh, it's the same as today, seeing 20 to 23. And as we head into Friday, you can see how with all that cloud gone in the far east, widely it's 18 to 22 degrees, peaking at 23 or 24. The far east coast will still be a little bit cooler, but that is inevitable this time of year. That is very microclimate conditions. Sea breeze is not really caused by the pressure patterns, but simply by localised temperature differences. So the coasts will always be slightly cooler, um, but most areas will be warm. And finally, as we head into Saturday and Sunday, Saturday very warm in the south and the west, widely 22 or 23 degrees, maybe as high as 24 or 25. And that's the same as we head into Sunday, where again, slightly cooler further east with some more cloud drifting in, perhaps again into the East Midlands, but elsewhere, 20 to 22 degrees. And through central parts of the Republic of Ireland, we're looking at maybe 23, 24, and you can't even rule out at 25 within there somewhere. So Republic of Ireland looking like it's going to be seeing the best conditions over the next five days. Perfect placed under the centre of the high, not got any of that thick cloud to play it with, just wall to wall sunshine and a generally pretty warm air mass. So do now have a look at the longer range if we do start on the GFS. Now yes they did show the risk of some thunderstorms moving back in as we do head into June and that is looking like it's continuing on today's run. So we do run through, high pressure is dominating over the top of us, you can see the ice bars coming from in from the east, and that's why it's slightly cooler at times with that thicker cloud. But as we progress uh, to around day six or so, you can see low pressure, an upper trough sat down towards the Azores, where generally high pressure should be, but that high pressure is reaching towards us. But watch this low, it slowly migrates northwards, heading towards the UK, and by around day eight, day nine, day ten, it's actually starting to impact us and it's drawing up a southerly wind to actually start to, start to draw up some very warm air on its eastern edge. Those temperatures could rise quite significantly ahead of this, maybe into the mid-20s more widely, but it does bring the risk of heavy showers 
and thunderstorms beyond this. Again, if we put on the pressure patterns, low pressure sat or nearby, and we see low pressure generally then form over central Europe, not over southern Europe like it has been at the moment. You can see it down towards the Mediterranean low pressure, but as we head beyond the Alps, you can see the brighter colours, the lighter colours, head more towards northern Europe, and that could bring the risk of more showers and more thunderstorms. Again, we're not looking at anything completely unsettled, but the risk of more showers around. And we can see this by putting on the precipitation. We want to, we'll have a look at the precipitation in a bit more detail in a second on the GFS, but you can just gently run through and see more uh, areas of precipitation closer by. And if we do zoom in and put on the cape, you can see uh, anything here sort of green and above is indicative potentially of heavy showers and thunderstorms. Uh, and you can see right now we've got nothing, and nothing really over the coming days, apart from a few isolated spots here or there. But it's really around the 8th of June starting to appear parts of Wales and southern England, and really picking up beyond that with with days there, like on the 11th of June, significant cape developing through parts of England, Wales, into Scotland. And that would bring a big thundery risk. And that's all because we've got this low pressure system sat out to our south and our west. Warm air pushing up, instability, heavy showers and thunderstorms. Again, if we go over to the weather outlook and have a look at the latest GFS, uh, so what we just looked at, but we'll have a look at the precipitation in detail, you can see as we do head into around that 7th, 8th of June, the thunderstorms moving up from the southwest within that low pressure system, we do see impacting the west and the south and parts of Problem Island, and Problem Island the best at the moment, we could see those thunderstorms first, and then as we head to also that 9th, 10th of June point, they start to develop a little bit more inland, more towards England and Wales, especially also southern and western regions. And then we see the bands of thunderstorms moving up. Could see some imports in from the channel and just generally quite a thundery outlook beyond that there. You can see the 11th of June, big areas of thunderstorms. Again, not too much detail with this. This is beyond day 10. So, uh, yeah, not a lot of detail within this. But just showing you the risk as we do head to around that sort of 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th of June point, that sort of five day period there, is low pressure could slide in and could give us a bit of a thundery risk. Again, normally we wouldn't be talking about this too much uh, as there is a uh, only risk of this, but considering the weather has been so stable and sort of the same old, same old warm, sunny, drier weather recently, this could be a big change if we did see this come off. Now, if you look at the GM, see if we have something similar here. Again, high pressure completely dominating over the coming days. Bit of an easterly flow, but nothing too crazy. As we talk towards the day seven point, you can see that low to our southwest. Got to watch it, and it does start to head our way. At day 10, it hasn't made that much progress, but it's made some progress, and you can see the high pressure is getting split apart a bit. So perhaps not a thundery breakdown. Uh, it is warm, uh, advecting warm air towards us at this stage, but it could just be a general more of a rainy, more unsettled breakdown. Again, if we do put on the precipitation, you can see areas of rain and thunderstorms moving up into the southwest associated with this, only really at the far end of day 10, squeezing up as the high pressure systems do move apart. So we will have to see what happens. GM hinting at some heavy showers and thunderstorms moving in around day 10, but nowhere near uh, as bullish as the GFS was going for, where this full bone low got just sat to our southwest, spiraling in all these areas of rain. So we'll have to say G GM is sort of on board with low pressure moving our way, but not fully on board with it moving properly uh, towards us uh, within the next 10 days at least. If you look at the ECFWF and compare, or, uh, see what that is showing. Again, heavy, uh, or sorry, high pressure dominating at the moment. That low pressure out to our southwest at day seven, starting to drift our way. At day ten, it's even closer than the GM. Again, not dominating, but even closer. We've got very warm air embedded within it, but actually. Similar to the GM, where we do see the lows split, uh, so with the high split, one towards Greenland, one out towards our east, we do see a bit of a northerly flow within this. On that temperature clash, uh, you see it from the temperature deviation here, got a good sort of 10 to 15 degree temperature clash here. We could see some frontal rain and some thunderstorms within this. So it could be a, quite a bit of a messy system here. And you can see all that rain heading up from the south, literally just skirting the far south coast at day 10. Uh, and as I said, because of a more of a temperature contrast, there'll be more heavier rain and more widespread rain associated with this than we saw with the GM. So all three runs hinting around that day 10 point of seeing rainfall 
reintroduced into our outlook um, in the form of low pressure sliding up from the southwest. GM east and DF hinting actually some cooler air coming in from the north as well, and it could all sort of culminate in a big uh, sort of low pressure system developing and uh, some thundery weather perhaps. So we will have to see, again, no guarantees at this stage, still around that day 10 point, it still can change, but it is that sort of pattern that we do see uh, that does tend to break up these sort of patterns. Um, that it does tend to make up these sort of high pressure systems. And of course, I did mention that we could bring up some very warm air as well. If that low pressure does slay out to our west, we do drag up some very warm air, it could actually go hot. So there are multiple different outcomes from this sort of scenario. Um, we just have to keep a very close eye on it. If you compare to the ensembles, you can see generally uh, average to well above average over the coming weeks. Precipitation does pick up around the 8th to 14th of June point. Again, not particularly high at this stage, but not completely minimal that we can just say it is going to be bone dry. It is looking likely to be bone dry in the next seven days, outsourced of the 6th of June. Uh, but it's beyond that. Precipitation does start to pick up, but not majorly. You can see... We have got a bit of a cool down in those upper air temperatures over the coming days, but again, still above average. And then we see a brief bump, perhaps around that 10th of June period, and that's when we could drag up that hotter air from the south. Uh, again, associated with more thundery weather, perhaps. Sea level pressure, again, this will give us indications of if we will be seeing low pressure moving up from the southwest. You can see there is a general uh, negative gradient with this towards lower pressure, but still no major low pressure dominating here. Again, it's more likely to be in the southwest anyway, so we wouldn't see a huge drop here, but there is a general dip by around 10 HPA, uh, 5 to 10 HPA here. So, yeah, could be something indicated there, but again, no, uh, we can't look at this in too much detail yet. And the two meter temperatures generally look quite decent, and you can see perhaps even hotter during the slightly more thundery, unsettled period that some runs are showing here as we do drag up that very hot air. So GFS was showing thundery conditions, but for London, showing here six consecutive days of 25 degrees or higher, could even be locally 30 degrees with this sort of outcome. If we do compare it finally to the ECMWF, see if we do have something similar. Again, very uh, close in the next seven days, dry and warm, well above average for the foreseeable future. And again, a bit of precipitation picking up around the 10th of June, but similar to the GFS, not enough to really make any distinct uh, observation at this stage. Just the risk of a bit of a warmer but thundery breakdown around that period, where we do see perhaps some lower pressure starting to move in. So we have to keep a really close eye on it, uh, but if you are enjoying the warm, dry weather, uh, especially in the west where it is best, east should get some better conditions over the coming days, but west it is best at the moment. Um, well, you're going to be getting a real, tr uh, you're going to get a real treat over the next seven days where it will continue to be uh, like this sort of pattern. Beyond that, things could change. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, um, and I'll see you again for another video soon.